Yo, 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 what is up, guys? It is Lucid Alvar here today with another video, and today we're actually going to be talking more about the Outer Worlds, the Outer Worlds lore, the lore in Outer Worlds, the lore, the lore, every lore. So today I'm actually going to be talking about Edgewater, but before we even get into the video, remember to leave a like and subscribe. Actually, don't leave a like yet because I don't even know if you guys are going to like this video. You know, might as well just leave a dislike. <laughs> I'm just playing. But really, leave a subscribe if you guys really do enjoy the content. Because I do work hard on this. And honestly, we're closing in on 1,000 subs, which really means a lot to me. So if you guys can do that, it would be nice. But without further ado, let's get into the Outer Worlds Edgewater. So Edgewater is actually one of these towns that has a nice, great, rich history. It is literally the Vale, the Emerald Vale. Like, if I shit you not, you go to the Emerald Vale, the jewel of the, the jewel of Everything there is literally Edgewater. So Edgewater is actually a frontier um, colony and they have recently just been set up. Like when I say recently, I mean like, you know, not well in terms of their time. You know, it's pretty recent. And we actually do get to meet the first person that's in charge is Reed. Reed Thompson. This man is literally the definition of a punching bag because you can kill him in one shot. That's right. You heard it here first, folks. You can kill him in one shot and all his guards are pretty much one shotable. So Reed is actually the supervisor of the town. He's kind of like the mayor in a sense in that term, like in terms of like that. He's more of the mayor of everything and he's in charge of everything. And, you know, the way that the board works is that he actually um, has to ask for permission for a lot of stuff that he wants to get done. But something about reed and why edgewater has been declining so recently because edgewater used to be a beautiful place it used to have the bright glory days and everything like you could used to walk into a strip club oh, wait wrong 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 thing I'm talking about here not not actually a strip club. you can walk into the cantina and it would be nice everything used to be nice there there used to be a geothermal plant um a community center that was abandoned some outside city ruins an abandoned um you know um settlement and also the that one place where the um the power plant the power plant and you know all these places used to be up up and running and thriving and then there's also this one other place where like zoe is the woman that you have to go and find that is actually abandoned too so you know there's a lot of areas the marketing that marketing division that's where it is everything there is just abandoned and it really makes you wonder was reed a good leader because this seems to all happen in the span of him taking over. And I think, if I remember correctly, it's about 10 years that he's been there. It's been the worst 10 years Edgewater has ever seen. They weren't hitting quotas. They weren't doing good. And maybe not all of it's applicable to Reed, but you see him have all this medical supply. Not, not a lot of medical supplies, but he decides not to give them to the workers, which then gives us at Addy. I call her Addy because I can't pronounce her actual full name. You know, I call that's why I call her Addy. And we get Addy, the opposite side of Reed, the person that used to work for Reed and, you know, ended up leaving and deserting because she did not believe in the spacer's choice or the board at all and thought that what they were doing is wrong, which in sense kind of isn't and is. It depends on what you believe in. But, you know, Addy decides to go to the geothermal plant and actually set up life there and use dead bodies actual dead bodies as fertilizer for the you know the food that she makes and helps people and cures people of this plague and now the plague is actually something i do want to touch on the plague has come and go and um you know edgewater over time like it's come and go come and go come and go it's like kind of a cyclical cycle and the plague actually ended up sticking around longer this time and so when the plagues st stuck around they were just like what are we going to do about this? You know, we don't have enough medical supplies now and stuff like that. And I actually do have a theory on why the plague would come and go. It's because, you know, the plague, you know, they, they used to have a lot of resources and stuff and they could probably take care of it before it like broke out massively. And this time when they didn't have the resources, it kind of just broke out massively. And the way that they would get treated is based on merit, based on how hard they work and stuff like that. Some people would get chosen, some people wouldn't. And, you know, this was Spacer's Choice Initiative where they said, you know, Reed, you're going to have to make a tough decision here. You don't have enough to make enough for everybody. And, you know, you're going to have to choose people. And we know it's unethical and 
and more. And actually, they didn't even say all that. They just told him that he, he has limited supplies that he has to choose based on merit. Why am I trying to make the board look like good guys? They're really not. Anyways, so he ends up doing this. And now let's talk about some other parts of Edgewater. Because this is pretty much just borderline history things that you, you learn right off the top. Uh, the community center it was supposed to be a museum. It was actually supposed to be a nice place with a museum with the with a Manti queen in there. But, you know, like every Manti queen, they sent hunters to go out and kill never came back with an actual full Manti queen and it actually ended up being a huge waste of money and they ended up having to shut down the community center because of this because you know they already weren't receiving you know like all these funds and you know this guy was obsessing over a Manti queen he wanted a Manti queen for his museum which is pretty cool you know and all that happened and you know he ended up not getting one and he ended up using a lot of his funding on it and you know, let's just say the community center never ended up going through with it because they ended up running out of resources and stuff and like that. So community center scratched off. And so now we come to marketing. That's the little abandoned buildings where Zoe is. Uh, and, you know, marketing the guy, I feel bad for the guy because he did want to like, you know, actually help out the people and, you know, him helping out the people by making like, you know, lighter lighter tuna in a sense like the tuna wasn't going to be as like you know condensed into a can but reed took this as a bad approach and he said that they don't want to compete with themselves and everything and they decided that they were gonna make heavier cans that can carry less tuna and that his idea was smart and like groundbreaking but that he's gonna be fired from his marketing position you really feel for this guy now we don't really know what happens to this guy at all but you know something does eventually happen to him i i guess the plague probably killed him and then let's talk about the abandoned settlement so the abandoned settlement is actually kind of uh an iffy for me i don't really know what happened here like there's a bunch of marauders so you can just you know subject it to marauders taking over the place and killing everybody in sight and you know that would be a plausible theory but you know the abandoned settlement could be due to you know them cutting off funding when they were still trying to expand everywhere because you saw like that there's a bunch of different expansions everywhere. Now, when we get to the geo geothermal plant, this place used to pretty much be a <laughs> geothermal plant, like it says in its name, but then it ended up being home to the deserters where they actually took refuge here and they would make the plants and everything. And they would also, you know, have the cure to the plague, which is a pretty nice thing, if you ask me. And that's pretty much like a lot of the lore that you have on it. You don't really have that much other one other than it shut down because of, you know, um, downsizing in a sense and then you go to the power plant where you go apparently it was taken over by a bunch of robots you can see it in a lot of the ter terminals especially when left by the head security guard that the that the robots started acting erratically and then i don't know where the robots just took over which if you think about it that crazy guy in edgewater was right these robots rise up against you oh man i'm so glad i mm, i got that fucking sword anyways let's go back to the max the main point you know so you know, this uh, power plant ended up being taken over by a bunch of machines and they were, you know, there. And then you meet this guy in the bottom of the basement. Pretty cool dude. He gives you a nice little worker manual. And, you know, the power plant ended up just falling apart due to all these robots. And now let's talk about the marauders and, you know, deserters. Marauders actually are just pretty much deserters. That people that decided to go to that life of banditry and stuff like that over actually working and everything. And, you know, they're pretty cool. They're not pretty cool people. They're pretty shitty people. They try to kill you, you know? that we, we can't let that slide here. Anyways, they are just, you know, your normal type of enemies. Deserters, on the other hand, are people that left Edgewater because they thought, you know, this isn't cool. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do, you know, like all this for just like to be treated like shit, which is pretty much true. And, you know, you if you decide to help the deserters, they'll actually you know, move back into town if you get rid of Reed one way or another. And the the sad thing about it is that if you tell Reed that Addie actually had a cure to the plague, then he will accept his defeat and he will put her as the actual leader and that he will resign and go and retire or something like that. And he is actually really disappointed in himself because he thought he was super great and everything. And, you know, not to blame on Reed's part, but Reed actually, if you go into his term, if you kill him and go into his terminal, you actually see that he was trying to do something for, you know, Edgewater. He wasn't just like kind of doing nothing. He was trying to make improvements to the walls, which I don't know. I mean, is an iffy, iffy, you know, if you tell me. Anyways, 
now let's go down to Pavardi and her dad. Pavardi actually had lived in the town forever. And she actually went to school and everything to become a engineer. And a lot of people frowned down on that because apparently you can't do that around here. You can't go to school for the same thing that your dad did. But she really loved it. And her dad was a seemed to be a really this like really like well known guy in the city. And he was pretty much worked to death by the sounds of it. And you know he ended up teaching his daughter a lot about mechanics and stuff. And actually being a really good dad for him, even though he never said I love you to his daughter. Which is strange, but if you go into this terminal, you do find out that he did end up having, you know, like this relationship with a woman who is his, who is his uh, like daughter's mother, and like that she ended up being relocated to Terra One, and that she's just chilling on Terra One, probably still alive and not knowing that, that like, really loving her daughter but not knowing anything about her, and you know that's pretty much the story of Edgewater. Edgewater is a nice, nice place. Anyways, hopefully you guys.